I'm Dr. Oliver Sarter. I work at Tulane University where I'm a professor and the medical director of the Cancer Center. I'm a medical oncologist by training and have been involved with prostate cancer for over 30 years. The VISION trial is an important phase three trial with an experimental agent called PSMA 617, lutetium 177. I think many of us know about PSMA targeted when it comes to imaging. And of course, we now, as of May the 27th of the United States, have a PSMA imaging agent broadly approved by the FDA. Bringing therapy to these PSMA positive patients is what Vision did. The patients were difficult to treat. They had already failed abiraterone, orenzalutamide, and at least one taxane and often two taxanes. These patients have few treatment options. There was a randomization between PSMA lutetium 177 plus standard of care or standard of care alone. The primary endpoints were overall survival and radiographic progression-free survival. Both endpoints are strikingly positive. The overall survival hazard ratio is 0 0.62, with P followed by many zeros, 01. This is a nice and positive trial, and it's well-tolerated therapy. I think it represents an important step forward. We had a long discussion prior to the vision trial with regards to how patient selection should occur. The use of PSMA scan is obvious, and there were questions about the cutoffs that we should use. Should we use something relative to liver? Should we use something relative to salivary glands? Should we create an SUV cutoff? In the end, we chose the liver because it's relatively easy to do. We also strongly considered the use of FDG PET. However, we decided not to do that. Let me tell you why. First of all, in the United States, there's difficulty with getting FDG PET reimbursed for prostate cancer patients. So if we were to impose a scan that would be difficult for patients to receive in the real world, that in fact would be a difficulty downstream. In addition, we took a clue from the radium trials, and when we looked at the overall selection of patients, we looked at soft tissue disease, and if there was a lymph node more than 2.5 centimeters that was PSMA negative on the cross-sectional imaging, then we excluded the patient. If there was something in a visceral organ, such as liver or lung, greater than one centimeter, what we did was exclude the patient if they had no PSMA uptake. So in essence, what we were doing were excluding patients with PSMA negative lesions of a certain size. In the end, that was a good strategy. There's overall survival benefit, and we feel our patient selection will be used in the real world. There will be significant geographic differences as this PSMA 617 Lutetium 177 therapy rolls out across the world. There are different models in different countries. As it turns out, there are, are treatments that have preceded this one that will help pave the way. I mentioned a few moments ago the use of radium-223. Radium-223 requires an isotopic license. Radium-223 is used in many sites throughout the United States, not all nuclear medicine. In fact, there's a lot of radiation oncologists have the ability to give this medication in the United States. I think that the rollout will be faster than expected because patients will demand it. And it turns out that centers that do not have the capabilities will develop it. In other countries, I'm not as expert in terms of being able to say what will and what will not work. But I will say that there's a very strong nuclear medicine community in Europe 
and the uptake is going to be rapid. The Germans, of course, are well known, but there are many sites in the Netherlands and in a variety of European countries where I think there will be some centralization, but regardless, life prolonging therapy will be given to patients, particularly this therapy, which is well tolerated. The use of radium-223 has been somewhat problematic since the introduction of abiraterone and enzalutamide. The original phase three Alcimca trial, which led to the approval of radium-223, was conducted in an era when the novel hormones, abiraterone and enzalutamide, were simply not used. Today, it's a different story. We know the context of the PSMA 617, Petition 177, can include patients who have failed abiraterone, insulutamide, and docetaxel. In fact, is we know that it works because of the vision trial. The radium doesn't have the same level of evidence in these advanced patients. In addition, patients are looking for PSA declines because that's their marker of success in many instances. The PSA decline rate for radium-223 is relatively small. I anticipate that we will have a large movement toward the use of PSMA Letitia 177, and I think there'll be a little bit of use of radium-223, but I think the new isotope, the Letitia, is gonna sway the day.